Guys, ganito ko kayo ka-love. Kahit umuulan, gagawa natin ng video today. Because I feel like this video is very, very useful for a lot of people out there. Now, medyo intimidated ako for today's video because I actually took a long time to process everything because I want this video to be a sort of a big guide for everyone that is looking to build their own home or even those that are just curious. Ano ba talaga ang kailangan kung gusto kong magpatayo ng bahay? Kasi I have a lot of friends that are building their own houses right now and the number one thing na sinasabi nila ay ang sakit pala sa ulo pag magpatayo ng bahay. And that is very true. Now, there are a lot of advantages and there are a lot of disadvantages when you want to build your own home. Siyempre, if you have your own property, instead of buying a house like the ones we have here, gusto mo, ako na lang mismo ang magpatayo ng bahay. Now, pwede rin meron kang specific needs that you want for your own home. Maybe isang kwarto just for you kasi gusto mo ng cigar lounge and yung mga nasa market, walang mga cigar lounge. Or, or you are the type of person that wants every single thing to be specced out to exactly your liking. That is also a very, very good advantage. Yun nga lang, medyo masakit sa ulo. <laughs> now, we are in the Monterrazas Prime project once again. And I feel like although these houses are straight for sale, ready to move in yung mga houses natin, kami yung mismong nagmamanage, kami yung nagtatayo, and then the buyer just buys it directly from us. Ang ganda ng example dito because I am able to show you the different stages of each and every part of the housing cycle. Meron tayong houses yet to be built. Ito, mga bare property that we are still excavating. Meron tayong nasa structural phase and meron tayong almost completed that is sa finishing phase. So, this video is for you guys and this is going to be a comprehensive guide to building your own home. Now, before we dive deep into today's video, I'm actually working on a project that I'm very, very excited to show you guys. Pero hindi pa tapos. Uh, we're still doing some of the renders. But I can show you a sneak peek right now. And because this video is sponsored by Epson Printers, I'll print a copy of that preview for you. Check this out. This is the Epson SC T3130X. And this printer is built for professionals like me. This is meant to print big jobs, yung mga malaking rolls of paper, blueprints, architectural stuff. And this has a lot of features going for it. For example po, ma'am sir, dito we have a touchscreen control and dito pwede mong iset yung Wi-Fi connectivity mo. So all I have to do is connect to the printer's Wi-Fi and then pwede ka nang mag-print. Ito yung pinakamalaking pet peeve ko when it takes so long to set up a printer. But with this one, it literally took me two minutes to connect this to my computer and start printing. Also, meron siyang precision core print head technology. So if you'll see when we're printing later, ang ganda ng quality. And not only that, it prints at a higher speed plus mas durable yung print head niya. It also prints on a lot of different types of paper. So yung mga CAD plotter na papers from Mylar, yung mga photo papers, even yung mga basic na pang office na mga paper, kaya din nito. Okay, I'll show you my favorite feature about this printer. If you can see right here, makikita natin yung mga levels of each color of the ink that we're using for the printer. So for example, if I'm printing a lot of material, I can just take a magenta refill ink, hindi cartridge ink, para mura. And habang nagpiprint siya, I'll just drop this in like so. And it can refill while it is doing its work. So this is a very efficient way of refilling a printer. No more expensive cartridges to deal with. And a lot faster as well. Now, while we are printing this, I can feel that this paper is cool to the touch. Hindi siya warm like other printers. That is because this has heat-free technology. And ibig sabihin yan is it doesn't use heat to print the ink onto the paper. So for those of us na malaki yung volume na ipiprint talaga, that means savings on electricity and also it's better for the environment. Okay, we're almost done. It's gonna cut the paper for me. <laughs> and there you go. If you notice also, this is a very small printer relative to printers that can do these types of printing. So that is also a very, very big advantage because 
yung sa office space natin, we don't have to commit to a lot of office space for the printer. Alright guys, check out this print quality right there. Not bad, not bad bad at all. Pero this is going to be a high-end clubhouse that will be building in Monterrazas de Cebu. So the same subdivision as Monterrazas Prime. This was a collaboration with LLG Architects as well. So this is going to be a very, very high-end typhoon-proof clubhouse. And makita natin dito that it has an elliptical shape to it. And this is going to have pa a ramp, a slow ramp going up to the rooftop to enjoy the 360-degree view of Cebu City. Meron pa nga sa loob a spiral staircase that also leads you up to the rooftop. So yung rooftop area, we're thinking this could be a perfect place for sunset yoga or mga exercise sessions. That is going to be the area for that. But if you just want to chill and lounge around, meron tayong a lot of areas right here. And even if you look closely, that area, may sunken tayo na sofa and lounge area. If you just choose to dip your toes in the water, meron tayong area for that. This is also the perfect area for mga kids to play around. But right here would be almost an Olympic-sized swimming pool that you can do laps in while enjoying the views of Cebu City. This is going to be a curved infinity pool, so sobrang ganda. Imagine having your coffee here, enjoying the sunset or the sunrise in this area. Plus, meron kang bar counter here, which we hope to serve like coffee and drinks in the future. So I'm very, very excited for this project. I can't show you guys everything yet because we're still working on the renders, but we'll do a complete tour, a virtual tour, when this is ready. So make sure you subscribe. Now, the biggest advice that I can give anyone looking to start a home is to start with professionals. And I know there are a lot of people na choose to build a house na walang architect and paminsan nagmamayabang pa na ay ginawa ko tong bahay na to walang architect required. I've had a lot of experience in the construction industry and ito lang masasabi ko, a good architect will make your house a lot more valuable because number one, sobrang ganda ng design, di ba? If you ever want to resell that house in the future, kahit mahal pa yung architect mo, merong value na binibigay si architect because now, your house is cohesive. It has a proper design language and ang ganda ng use case because the architect's job is not just to beautify your home, it's to guide the vibe of the home pag tumitira ka na sa loob ng bahay. And I'll show you a few more examples. For example, itong bahay na to, we opted for a minimalist feel. Now, it's an open space with indoor-outdoor living. Meron pa tayong pool. Pero if you don't have an architect, Paano mo ba malalaman anong saktong space that will be there for the kitchen, yung sofa or dining area dito, ano ba, gano ba kalaki, or even yung mga living space and TV consoles. Gano ba kataas yung TV dapat? Anong magiging design? And even yung powder room, saan ba dapat ilalagay? Kasi mayroon pa itong mga plumbing lines dito. So essentially, your architect is your point person for planning your entire home and talking to all the other trades when it comes to making sure that your home is as seamless and as functional as possible. Talking about function, if you notice, ang dami ding nating mga openings here and there. And this was as per architect's suggestion. And the whole point of this is to make sure that air flows in and out. Not only that, meron ding mga design decisions na ginawa namin, especially our architects, para maliwanag talaga sa loob ng bahay. Now, I don't think any layman without proper training or experience nakikita nila to. And that's just one thing. So imagine if, let's say for example, chinacharge ka ng architect mo for a 10 million home, maybe 500,000, 1 million. What would happen now to your 10 million investment if pangit yung bahay mo. Diba? Better to spend just a little bit more to make sure everything is done right properly and also the architect will be the guide to the other trades that we'll be talking about also today. Guys, singit ko lang to. A lot of people ask me about how to choose the right architect 
for their home. And although that could be another video, I'll give you this one tip. Just look at what type of aesthetic you want your home to have and check out the previous works of the architects that you're considering. Because ang architect, para yung artist, merong style na parang Picasso, merong style na parang Rembrandt, yung mga classics, or meron ding mga, I don't know, hindi ako masyado familiar. Pero ang hirap mong gawin si Picasso magpaint like Leonardo da Vinci, di ba? Ibat ibang style talaga. So, for example, my style tend to be minimalist, very Singaporean yung dating, very modern Asian, or sometimes even cabin feel. So, si LLG Architects magaling sa mga ganyang bagay. And that's why I chose to partner with them for this project. Now, say for example that this is your property and this is where you'll be building your dream house. At yung area na yun, sa kapitbahay mo na. Paano mo malalaman where your property starts and where does it end? Now, there are, syempre, property markers na makikita natin. But as per experience, those sometimes tend to be unreliable. Now, my next advice for you is to contact a geodetic engineer. If hindi nyo alam kung saan mag-contact, I'm sure your architect meron silang mga suki or mayroong mga kakilala to help you along the way. Pero the geodetic engineer are the surveyors. Yung nakikita natin sa daan na when they're building roads, na gumaganya na may telescope na sinasight, that's exactly what they're doing. They are putting points in your property to know exactly where your house will be. And this is very, very important kasi meron akong mga stories, horror stories of people building their home. And pag malapit na matatapos, malalaman nila na, oh, it's encroaching on my neighbor. Kailangan sirain, kailangan lilipat yung mga columns, yung mga poste. And that is such a big headache. And not only that, a very, very big expense. So, geodetic engineer, hindi ko kayo nakalimutan. The biggest question I get when it comes to this project is those houses right there. And that usually pertains to building on a slope. So, is it safe? How do you do it? Ano pang kailangan ng mga aspects para magiging matibay yung bahay? And that is the job of our geotechnical engineer. Kanina geodetic engineer, ngayon geotechnical. And those people are soil experts. They know exactly how to study soil, the potential for landslides, and how strong your soil is. Even if you're not building on a slope, it's very, very important na malalaman mo, even before constructing, how strong your soil is because that dictates the size of your foundation or yung footing na nilalagay natin sa loob ng bahay. Kasi, for example, this is limestone that's very, very hard. If nakikita natin, we're using very heavy equipments to just carve through the mountain. Pero meron ding mga places wherein soft yung soil, medyo clay siya or yung medyo malambot yung soil. And for us to know exactly what to do with it, that's the job of a geotechnical engineer and their soil investigation. Now, I show you guys a little secret, and a lot of you have been asking this. If you notice, those houses right there seem like they're floating and just being placed on top of the mountain. And a lot of you are fearing that it might not be safe. Pero ito yung secreto natin, guys. The foundation of those houses are actually a lot deeper. So for this house right here, makikita natin yung foundation is almost at the road level already. Same with that house, yung mga parang hagdanan dyan will all be the foundation of the house. So yung mga bahay na yan, although it may look like they are floating, yung foundation nila ay parang roots na sobrang lalim talaga. And it's just an effect para maganda siya tingnan. And to actually make this project possible. And yung discarte na yon ay hindi galing sa akin. Galing yan sa tinatawag natin na structural engineer. The job of the structural engineer is not only to make your houses safe from typhoons, from earthquakes, and all other calamities. Their job is also to make sure that your home is as efficient as possible. So, kung ako lang ang nagde-design, syempre hindi ako trained structural engineer, hindi ko talaga yan linya, I would say, oh sige, gawin mo na lang ng sobrang laki para siguradong yung bahay ko ay extra safe. Pero, 
that would also mean that I'm spending now a lot on rebars, on concrete, and everything else. So although, if you notice a trend, ito mga professionals na hinahire natin, kailangan natin bayaran, medyo magastos, in the long run, they're actually saving you money. Speaking of structural engineers, I see this as a common practice mostly in smaller projects and that is to omit yung structural engineer na agad. Si foreman na ang bahala kung gaano kalaki ang columns, kung anong gagawin sa mga flooring or sa mga beams natin. And I see that as a very, very bad practice. Number one, because yung sinasabi ko na it may not be as efficient as possible. Number two, there are a lot of safety aspects that we need to be able to consider. For example, itong mga columns natin dito, makikita natin na meron siyang something rectangular that's tying them together. That's called a stirrup. So, itong stirrup, mukha lang siyang, okay, it's just a square thing that's, that ties all the rebars together. Pero, this is actually designed as well because this is an important part of the integrity of your home. Itong radius na to, kung paano siya tinutupi, this has a saktong specification. Not only that, even up to the length of yung extra na rebar dito, meron to siyang design parameters na fina-follow to make sure your home is as safe as possible. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of the trades already, but we're not done yet. So, napapansin nyo na nagfo-focus tayo on the trades because these are the steps that we need to build your home. Siyempre, merong dapat mga consultants that help us along the way because we cannot do everything by ourselves. Hindi naman tayo superman. Now, we're going to be talking about mechanical, electrical, plumbing, or the MEPF, paminsan, na trades. So, we're talking about the MEPF trade, and that stands for Mechanical, Electrical, Plumbing, and Fire Protection. Usually, dito sa mga bahay na ganito, hindi na natin kailangan si mechanical. They deal with mga big ductings of mga air conditioning sa so mga malls, mga condos. And fire protection sa bahay, hindi naman tayo usually naglalagay ng mga sprinkler system. So, we will talk about the electrical and plumbing side of the design. First up, then this is coming from experience, is the electrical engineer. So, si electrical engineer, paminsan, nawawala din sa passing kasi kinukuha lang si electrician. And what this is coming from experience, what that usually entails is you either have very big wires, so mas mahal yung mga bahay natin, or you have undersized wires or yung mga grounded na mga sockets or just improper design of your electrical system. So, again, if you're noticing a trend, itong mga professionals, they're actually helping us long term. Imagine if magkamale yung wires, it's too small, and there's a fire in your home. Yun ang mangyayari. And that is the exact same reason why we suggest you hire a proper plumbing professional or tinatawag natin na master plumber. So, itong mga master plumber, Ang ginagawa nila is to design everything that has to do with water and yung mga CRs natin sa bahay para to make sure they're the right size, they're the right location, and all of it are done according to specifications para wala na tayong problema when we move in to our new home. <laughs> Pinawisan ako, guys. <laughs> ah, okay, so... Now we have completed most of the design trades or all of the design trades. And ang job ng architect is to now compile everything and make the blueprints for your home. Meron kang architectural with the proper size of your property and even the topography of your property. Meron kang structural who already knows the proper way to deal about the soil because he has talked to your geotechnical engineer. Now you also have the electrical and the plumbing. So the job now of the architect is to combine everything to make sure that everything is holistic. Siyempre, when the structural design comes out, hindi pa alam ni architect na ganito pala kalaki na column ang kailangan ni structural engineer. So i-adjust yan ng konti. So, maraming mga maliliit na details. That's why, kung napapansin mo rin, yung mga bahay na walang mga architects, 
merong mga, uy, habol dito na wire. Mali yung height ng ceiling kasi hindi sakto yung depth ng beam na naka-specify. There are a lot of detrimental aspects because hindi siya na-consider ahead of time. Okay, this video has been a lot more tiring than I thought it would be. From your end, mukha siyang madali lang, pero we've been walking around up and down the entire development just to show you guys certain places. Pero, mabalik tayo sa topic. Now that you have your complete set of plans, now it's time to hire your contractor. Now, most of the questions when it comes to the hiring the proper contractor comes to two things. How do I know that it's a quality and honest contractor, hindi ako is a scam? And how do I make sure that I'm getting the best price? And ito yung advice ko. For the first one, just take a look at their past projects. Any reputable contractor would be proud of their previous works and ipapakita nila sa inyo. Pwede pa dun mga contacts and you can just call them, Kumusta to? Okay ba to? And that is the surefire way of making sure na sakto yung reputation ng contractor. Second, when it comes to saving money on your home, and this is the biggest tip I can give you, is to make sure that you have at least two to three different types of contractors that you're asking from a quote from. Because if I tell you, yung bahay mo, ah, ito, 10 million. Hindi mo alam if that 10 million is expensive or not because you don't have a point of comparison. By getting two or three, alam na natin kung ano yung dapat na mga pricing. We have a ballpark figure and we can negotiate from there. Meron pa pala guys, because construction contracts tend to be complicated, ano yung included, not included, may mga mobilization fee, general requirement, etc, etc. I would suggest a quantity surveyor. Pero, that is usually used for bigger projects. So, I think the advice for you is, gawa na lang tayo ng ibang video on making sure you know how to read the right quotes from your contractor. And to make sure, hindi kayo niloloko sa quote. Okay, so we're heading up once again. Grabe exercise. To show you that last piece of the puzzle right there. Yung office na nandun. That is the final step of the process. To make sure na may minimize natin yung sakit sa ulo when it comes to building a home. Now, this one is, I would say, a bonus step because not every project needs to have this. But ang laki ng tulong, you want to be guided in your construction journey. And that is the office of our project manager. The project manager serves as a guide to everything. To make sure that the architect specs are followed, to make sure yung electrical, yung plumbing, yung structural quality checks are done. And yung job nila din is to make sure that the project goes as smoothly as possible and as on time as possible so that wala kang sakit sa ulo. That's the project manager. <laughs> Ito yung vantage point from our construction management or our projects management group na ikita nila. Yung buong development and even the beautiful view of this subdivision. So, I'm very very thankful to have them kasi kahit ako, even if I know what I'm doing, it's good to have an extra set of ears and eyes and even yung extra brain power kasi sila talaga ang experts when it comes to making sure that everything is running as smoothly as possible. And sila din yung nagtatanggal sa mga sakit sa ulo ko from time to time when it comes to managing this project. So from that point where those heavy equipments are up to here will all be houses, but we've also dedicated more than half of the property for greenery para may balance kami when it comes to the environmental impact of this development. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sure meron kayong mga questions, so put them down below. But make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.